Hey everybody, my name is Dowden, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make music in the style of Cora and Gabrone. Both artists tend to have very high quality tracks with a lot of really tiny details and subtleties that really create a very atmospheric, full, and a professional sounding track. For this style of organic house and deep house, you usually have a very full, warm bass, and it sounds like this. The percussion is full of rhythmic elements, it's organic, it's humanized, and it sounds like this. The moody yet blissful melody and atmosphere is really what ties these tracks together and they sound like this. So we're going to go over all this in the video, but before we do, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this one. And if you want to grab the project files, they are available for download in the link below as well. Let's get started. The way this video is going to work is I'm going to go through each section of the instruments of the track. So start with the kick, then the bass, drums, then the synths, and then the effects. The MIDI information is there for most of the instruments, but I'm going to create the sounds in real time as well as the processing, and I'll give a brief explanation as to kind of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how it relates to this style of music that is this organic house, deep house, Cora and Gabrome style. The track is in A minor and it's 117 BPM. This style ranges anywhere from 110 BPM to 124, 125 even, but mostly hangs out around 118 to 122. The kick, I have three main sections of a kick. I have the low ends, the mids, and the highs. And with this style of music, the highs aren't as snappy, aren't as present in the highs as much as other genres. So you can actually try to find a kick that's a little bit more punchy around this section than it is snappy around this section. So let's push this up and you can hear what I mean. So we're gonna get a bit more body out of these kicks. We don't want them to sound boxy or muddy, but just not super snappy like this. Although this does sound pretty nice for a kick, I like to keep it just a little bit softer in the high end. Maybe we'll bring it up just a little bit. But usually you want a nice body around here and a nice punch around this area and of course a nice healthy strong sub. Of course we can use drum bus which is one of my favorite tools Ableton has to offer. And we'll just turn this down a little bit. Push that drive up a tiny bit. A little bit of crunch and the filter up. Just adds that extra power behind it. And that's pretty much it for the kick. Let's move on to the bass. So you'll notice that with a lot of the sections of this track and chorus style and Gabrome style is that they have a lot going on, but it's very well done. It's not overwhelming. It's not too busy. They have a lot of small details that make a beautiful track. So there'll be one shots and atmospheres that come and go very subtly and a lot of layers that are super quiet or just very subtle and in the background of the mix. Even with the bass line, we're going to have four layers of bass here, which gives us a lot to play with in the low end without being super obvious. So let's grab the sub bass first. It's just going to be a wavetable. And it's going to be the sine wave. And then I'm going to just turn the sustain all the way up and just add a little bit of release. I want this to kind of, when the note stops playing, it's going to kind of fade out a little bit. It's not just going to be so cut and dry. Again, we want this to be organic, right? We want it to be not so robotic sounding. So with that little bit of tail, it sounds just a little bit more organic. And then I'm going to grab an EQ and I'm going to grab a saturator. And the saturator is going to give us a little bit of warmth. Let's take a look at the MIDI. So you'll notice right away, I have a bass note hitting on the same note as the kick. I found that Cora has this in quite a few tracks where he incorporates that kick and bass relationship into the groups. So when the kick hits, it's kind of just like boom, and it has this long sustained kind of kick bass action, and it sounds really cool. It's, it's something that a lot of producers are afraid of doing is putting that kick and bass at the same time, but if you're careful with it, you can do this. So I'm going to add a compressor and really squash the crap out of that. Let's move it after the EQ. So compress, sidechain from the kick. So we're sidechain compressing, really fast attack and really fast release. I want it to kind of 
hug that base. So the kick comes in, it punches, it ducks down, and very quickly it comes back up. If I put the attack too fast, we get a clicking, so I'm going to reduce that a bit. Let's make it a little bit slower. There we go. And placement of the bass notes is very important as well. You'll notice that this is just like really close to here. But it's adding that nice groove. And that's what's really important with this style as well. We want pretty much everything we bring in here to be groovy or to be hooky or to, you know, be rhythmic. And the further we get through the track, the more you'll realize that most of the MIDI and most of the drums I have follow patterns that are catchy and rhythmic. I'm just going to push the drive up a little bit more and roll off that high end. It just feels a little bit warmer. And it's a little bit loud, so let's tool that down. Great. Let's move on to the bass top. So I'm going to duplicate this sub bass with everything here, including the MIDI information. And let's rename this to bass top. This is going to be the higher end of the bass. Let's take this bass top. We have the same MIDI information, but I'm going to put this filter on and I'm going to push this up to a sawtooth wave. You can hear it's a bit grittier. We can turn the EQ off. The drive is also pushing up. Let's reduce it a little bit and let's put that EQ back on. I want to roll off. So we're just getting the warmth of the highs, but a little bit more aggressively. I don't need that sub frequency. So let's actually go up an octave here. So I can roll off just to be safe. And this is going to help it punch through the mix. It's going to be pretty quiet. We also don't need to side chain it as much. So that's kind of one of the reasons why I separated it. I usually like to have my sub separate. I want to do my own processing on it, and then I'll have the top layer. Even though we have the saturator here, I want to add a second layer of saturation and have more control over it. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. I'm just going to pull this filter down a little bit. I'm going to make it more like a pluck sound. So I'm going to go into my matrix and on frequency, I'm going to push up envelope two a little bit. It's just jumping up the filter a little bit, making it just a little bit punchy. Moving on to the third layer of bass. So I'm going to grab this sub bass and I'm going to duplicate just the wavetable onto that softer bass. I call it the softer bass because it's going to be a quieter sub bass. So this is the third layer of bass. The first is a sub, the second is the top end of that sub, and the third is a sub without that gritty top end. We can add a little bit of saturation. So maybe I'll just move this up a little bit just to get a tiny bit. We can see that on the EQ. And we'll just definitely roll that off. Maybe a little bit more. Just want to grab just that first and second octave there. Maybe even all the way up. There we go. And this is going to be quieter and it's more of an accent. So what I mean by that is it's not the main sub. It's just kind of there to complement that sub frequency here. It's going to play along and add just another layer of bass, but quieter and less obvious. And you'll notice that they're not hitting at the same time, which is important. So I have the sub, and then I have the secondary sub. You don't want two sub layers to overlap. So let's try that. And then, of course, I'm going to add the same side chain compression as the first one onto there. So you're really hearing this one quite a bit. These two here but you're not hearing this one so much. It's just really there to just give a little bit extra sub bass in the areas that don't have it. Last, I have this bass tom, and this is, again, just another layer of bass, but it's not going to be the full sub because it's going to be hitting at the same time as some of the subs, and I just want it there to kind of give a bit of mid-presence. 
I'm gonna EQ out the low end and just focus on that second octave. And I wanna make sure that I'm in an A because the track is in A. Perfect. You'll notice how far apart these notes are, and that's important too. I'm placing them in a space that adds to the groove. Again, it's complementing the groove. It's not just randomly put in there. They are far apart, but they work well with the kick and the bass. They're kind of filling up that empty space a little bit, and they're just there once in a while to add like a subtle extra little detail. And again, at the end of the track, you're going to hear all these little details very quietly, but it combined, it makes a really full, interesting track. Let's take a listen one more time and then we'll move on. I'll even turn the softer bass down a little bit. Nice and groovy, the bass feels warm and present. Let's move on to the drums. Cora and Gabrom's style of drums, just like before, there's a lot of intricacies. There's a lot of subtle hints of sound. There's a lot of subtle instruments that all come together to make that really full sounding drum loop. For organic and the style of deep house or melodic house, to make it sound very organic, you need to have realistic sounding drums, humanized drums. You want it to sound less robotic and computerized and more like real life instruments to give it that organic feel. To accomplish this, it's a lot of subtleties. So we're gonna go over quite a few things in the drums that are going to give a little bit more realism to the entire drum loop. For this style of music, the details really do matter, so let's dive in. First, we're gonna start with the shaker, and this shaker is gonna fill up quite a lot of the spectrum, but I noticed that in a lot of Cora's tracks, he has a really quiet shaker, and sometimes there's no shaker at all. He just relies on the hi-hats, which is really cool because in a lot of organic house tracks, the shaker is a very prevalent, very obvious instrument. To make this shaker loop, I combined a couple different instruments to make it sound really full. Let's take a listen. There's a lot going on, there's multiple instruments, and in the background, I have an egg shaker. Egg shakers make for great shaker loops. I suggest grabbing some egg shaker loops if you don't already have them, or tambourine loops. Just real instruments that people record because then they're humanized because they're not just programmed and they're not repeating exactly the same. You have that human element to it, which just gives it this organic swing. And then a lot of width, panning back and forth, layers of instruments. We're all gonna cover this in the drums after the shaker. So let's bring that down in volume because I want it to be like Cora where he has it really quiet. EQ out some of that low end. So I can hear there's a tiny, tiny bit of low end in there I don't need. And we'll move on to the hats. So the first hat here, I have four layers. I have soft, punch, grit, and tail. So I layered up four different hats because I wanted it to be a nice full sounding hat, but I want it to be kind of moving and interesting. So I need multiple layers. Let's take a listen to the four layers. Soft, I'm just going to fade in the beginning a little bit, and I'll turn it up a little bit. So that quick kind of fade in just gives it a little bit more character. It's not just hitting right away like a regular hi-hat, and we can pan this one using auto pan. So let's go ahead and put an auto pan on there, and we'll put this pretty, pretty subtle. It's going to be panning back and forth in our ears, make it sound more interesting. The punch hat is nice and punchy, but I just felt like it was too short. So I wanted to add a little bit more. It's nice, punchy hat, it's clean. And then the grit is to kind of fill up that empty space that that hat doesn't have. Then last I have the tail and the tail is really good for adding just that, that nice subtle hiss into the next hat. I usually don't want this too loud because I don't want it to sound like it's a big open hat but adding just a subtle layer of tail under the hat will kind of make it feel a little bit more full in the top end, and it can add a little bit of swing as well. So we can push this one maybe a little bit to the left, this grit a little bit to the right, give it even more depth. And the tail, I will use a Haas effect on there, which is just the stereo delay, 100% dry wet, 0% feedback, and the timing will be in milliseconds. Maybe a little bit less, so it's not so obvious. Perfect. So now we have that width of the tail, we have the grit, we have the punch, and the soft. Let's go into the actual MIDI here. So, of course, we could draw in four layers here. 
and duplicate that over. Let's hear it with the kick. Oh, you know, full that hat sounds. It sounds great. If we pull these out and just use one, it doesn't sound nearly as good as all four. It sounds much more full. To make this even more organic, more realistic, let's adjust some of these. So the tail we can keep as is, but the grit, let's move slightly. Maybe leave that one there and this one over here. So now they're each hitting a little bit different. The punch we can uh, leave in as well, but let's move the soft over quite a bit. Now that hat feels a little bit longer. It's not so tight and punchy, but it's kind of got a little bit more width to the actual audio in terms of length. Sounds a little bit like a fuller hat. A little longer. And I did that on the soft one because it fades in. So it's not going to be like a, a hit. If we, if we pull that fade in out, we can really hear it. So I fade it in. And that hat feels nice and full. Last thing I can do is maybe just add some extra little hits here. So maybe we'll go here and say he here and i'll just bring those velocities down quite a bit and that's going to add even more swing there's those little accented hats maybe one more over here i'll just eq out the low end of the hats as well i don't need that but they sound very organic and realistic that's pretty much it for the hi-hat. We have four layers, but they're all kind of doing something different, and they're all adding just a little bit extra to that hat to make it sound nice and full, and we have that little bit of variation through each of them. You can take this further and go in and actually adjust the velocities of each individual one, or we can use a velocity tool. So I'm gonna grab the velocity tool and throw that on the drums, and I'm going to turn up the random to say 12 or 15. And that's just going to add a little bit of velocity randomness to the hat. So each one of these notes will hit just a little different every single time. All right, so we're going to move on to something that's called the background tats. And they're just little hits. This is, uh, I, I've heard these in a couple of organic house style tracks. You'll notice again that it's a rhythm. It's repeating. It's 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 actually catchy. I'm not just choosing randomly to throw them in and make little accents here and there. I've chosen a pattern that's catchy. The velocity's changed as well, so I've reduced some velocity on these notes. And that's gonna make it feel even more organic. So I could even grab that velocity tool and throw it again on here. So we're getting just a bit of random velocity on these background tats. So now what I'm gonna do is grab a vocoder and then I'm going to cut out most of the lows and a little bit of the highs maybe a little higher whoop yeah that looks good and then i'm going to have this kind of cool tapping sound i don't really want it like a hi-hat i want it more like a, a knocking but i don't want that low either so let's cut out some of that low and then i'm going to use an lfo you don't have max for live, you can automate this yourself or just ignore this part. I'm gonna map that to the release and let's push that to about 30 to 40. And that's gonna change the release there. Maybe a little bit slower. So 30 to say 35. I can change the formants if I wanna change the pitch. And let's put a little reverb on there as well. Let's turn up the volume a bit. Let's hear that with the rest of the instruments. Maybe a little bit more low end. And let's do some auto pan as well. So it's very subtle, but like I said, a lot of this will be. We can go ahead and move on to the clap. That's pretty much it for the background tats. With the clap, with this style, you're looking usually for something that is either very muted, meaning it is kind of softer, um, 
kind of sounds more like this. I can show you an example, right? With the high end kind of faded out or one that's a little bit more like the one I chose, which is going to be more of a kind of snap. And we can take a listen with the drums, with that clap and the kick. Right, very organic sounding. But I felt like it wasn't enough, so I added another layer underneath. But there we go. So that's adding a little bit of low and a little bit of punch to that. Let's listen before and after. Right, like without it, it's just a snap. With it, uh, it sounds good. It sounds nice and full. I'm going to add a little bit of saturation to this as well, just to give it a little bit more weight and to kind of glue it together. Nice. Super simple for the clap, but I don't have them in different channels here, so I'm going to choose a different channel. I'm going to go up here, grab everything here, and just duplicate that up. And the same thing with I did with the hat, just kind of move one over. I'll move maybe this one a little bit to the left, and I'll move this one a little bit to the right. Just to give it that bit of offset, which they're both going to hit a little bit differently. And then I'm going to actually change this one so that it's wide and the bottom so that it's very mono, very centered in the mix. So I'm going to grab the has effect, throw that on the snappy. So again, that same effect that I used before, because without it, this one just sounds kind of dull. Like it's, it's very centered in the mix. It's not very... It's not very wide at all, or it's not wide, it's, it's mono. So I'm going to use this Haas effect to give it that nice, wide sound. If you're using headphones especially, you're going to hear this a lot. And then what I'm going to do with this one is just make it totally mono by using a utility. And just bringing it right down the center of the mix. So now I have one that's very wide and one that's directly in the center of the mix and we're going to have best of both so we get that width without worrying that it's going to cause any phase cancellation or any issues. And maybe we just reduce it just slightly because it's a little bit too wide. There we go. Sounding pretty good. Next, I have some bongos. So these are pretty simple. The bongos are just playing two notes every bar. So just the beginning and the end. And one thing to really pay attention to here is that this is very close. It's only a 16th before the kick. I noticed this in a lot of organic house tracks. They have this hit right before the kick, and it kind of feels like it speeds up the track a little bit in a good way. It kind of feels like you're rolling into the next kick. I've heard it in quite a few tracks and I tried it and it actually does. It adds like a nice little bit of rolling. So let's listen to that with the kick. It's just something that I noticed was in a lot of tracks. So I tried it and I feel like it adds some value. And of course, gonna EQ at that low end. I don't need that. And maybe turn it up a little bit. Maybe cut off a little bit of the high end as well. I don't need so much high end of that. I actually did the same thing in this bass tom. If you pay close attention to this right here. It's just adding that boom, ba boom. This really, really complements that, that groove. Moving on to the high tom. So this is going to be one that finally adds a bit of atmosphere to the song as well. So what I mean by that is I'm going to use this as a bit of a pitch. So I'm going to use uh, one of these toms to add some groove and the other tom is going to be used as kind of like this percussive atmospheric sound. And this is where it starts to really fill up the track and start to sound more melodic. Let's go ahead and take a look at the MIDI. I have two toms here. Again with the rhythms, catchy hooky that is a trend i want you to take from this that it is going to be a lot of those repetitive patterns that are very important to making this work so let's go ahead and let's solo the first one 
These are actually named wrong. This shouldn't be lower and this one should be higher. So the lower is fine as is. It's the higher that I'm going to add the Wanderer to. The Wanderer, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I use this bad boy all the time. I love using it, but I don't want that low end filter. I want it up here. So I'm just going to go like this and let's let that higher one play by itself. Keep in mind, this is only on the higher one, not the lower. Okay, so we have that re repetition. I'm going to turn the feedback down just a little bit. And let's throw a reverb on there. Pretty short reverb because it's going to be repeating so much. Low cut. And I'm going to also EQ after. And I'm really going to cut out this section here. This is kind of counterintuitive, but it's a very strong pitch. So I'm just going to reduce that and let a lot of the, the high end kind of peek through. And I'm going to compress as well. So let me compress pretty hard here. I'm going to compress the actual sound itself. Just because it has that kind of high end. And then I'm going to turn that other tom back on. And again, I don't want that other low end, so let me just cut that both out. Again, very subtle, very background, but let's listen to it in the context of the mix now. I actually think the hi-hat has a little bit too much tail. I'm going to turn it down. Much better. Last percussive element I have is called percussion. Yeah. So this is just a bongo hit that I took and resampled. I cut out the low end of it, so we're only dealing with kind of the hit and a little bit of the mids. Cut out more low end because I can still see there's some getting through. It's catchy, it's working with the track, and it's just adding extra value. Let's listen to the whole thing. Drums, percussion, and the kick. Great. We're going to move on to the synths next. The synths are what's going to bring this track to life and really to bring it from this interesting organic drum loop into a more full, really melodic style of track. So... First, I'll start with the string pad, and the reason I want to start with that is because it just gives us that key, that pitch to go off of. What I did for this was just a simple wavetable. I love making pads like this, they're super simple. The sawtooth, I'm going to add a second oscillator, and maybe a little bit lower, maybe a triangle. And I want these different synths to kind of work in between each other. I want them to have multiple layers and work with each other to kind of blend together like we did with the drums and the bass. So let's bring the volume of this other one down, bring the octave down, and let's just solo this. All I did for this was a A minor chord, but then I inverted that E. So I took the high E and I brought it down one whole octave. This works by making it feel a bit darker, even though it's the same chord with just the lower third note. And it just, you still have the A minor, but that last note is just a bit, is in the lower octave. Let's turn that filter down. And let's turn the unison on. This is what makes it sound really good right here. Voice is up, about 20% unison, and... Nice. Great. So I want to add some movement to this. I don't want it just to be... I want to make it move around, feel a bit like organic and interesting in the background. So I'm going to add some LFOs onto here. So LFO 1. Let's turn the rate down a little bit, the amount down a little bit. And let's turn the retrigger off. So the matrix. Uh, with the retrigger, it's not going to reset every time a new note is played. So let's go to the matrix and LFO 1. Sure, I'll put a little bit on the amplitude. Just a little bit, a little touch. The pitch, no, I won't touch that because it'll sound like a, like a fun house. Oscillator 1 position? Yeah, why not? All right, L oscillator 2 position. Change that. Filter. Change that. Unison amount. Why not? Resonance. I 
Yeah. And now this pad has quite a bit of movement. Maybe turn the speed down just a little bit more. And EQ out some of that low end. And some high end. Maybe a little bit more on the high end. And then I'll add a reverb onto there. So I'm not gonna actually use this reverb. I'm gonna show you you can use this reverb, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be so bad. And I'm gonna bring a realm into this. So I love this reverb, it sounds so good. Beautiful. So now we have the string pad. Let's move on to some of the other melodic elements now that we have this chord to work off of. This helps with writing melodies and getting other melodic ideas down because you kind of have that minor chord to give you an idea if it works with the vibe that you're setting for the rest of the track. This next one is hook pluck and I call it hook pluck. It's not really much of a hook, but it's adding just a little bit extra to the overall presence of the melody. So it's just super simple MIDI. We just have the E and the A alternating back and forth. So let's grab a wavetable. Throw it on there. And I'm just gonna make a very simple pluck sound. Filter on, envelope two. We'll put the filter up. I don't really hear anything. And it's gonna be a softer pluck. Maybe more of a, of a square. A little bit. A little bit of resonance. EQ out some of that low end. And EQ out a little bit of that grittiness. Maybe put some house effect on there, some stereo width. Just throwing a reverb on this and putting it further in the background of the mix, maybe even a little bit of delay. It's a little bit. Very, very slight amount. Bit of pre-delay to push it even further back in the mix. It just adds a little bit more to those, again, those subtle texture details. Turn the string pad down just a couple decibels. Maybe we can add another octave here and just get a little bit of high end. A little bit. Let's add another note in here actually. So I want to make this even groovier, right? I want this to be even more of a background subtlety, but it's still groovy. So I'm going to add another note. And this, this note actually does matter where you're putting it because if you're putting it here, in terms of key, it can add tension, it can add mystery, it can make it feel a little bit happier. Right? It can it makes it a little bit happier, but if we bring this down to the F, it sounds a little bit more minor and a little bit more creepy, mysterious. That's important to note as well, putting the notes in not only a, a spot that's gonna make it even more hooky, but it complements the vibe. And since we're going for that more of a deeper, darker vibe, we don't wanna have a happier sounding note in that scale if you wanna kinda keep that vibe going. I'm gonna bring the velocity of these ones down. Perfect, I'm gonna bring the high end up just a little bit more. A little bit more delay. It's just adding extra value to the loop. It's adding more melody. It's adding more layers. And it's just all starting to come together to feel very full, very warm, and very melodic. Let's go ahead on to this lead sound. So I'm just going to duplicate this pluck right here. Gonna duplicate it over, save us some time, throw that in the lead, and we'll duplicate over the delay and the reverb as well. So this lead is, again, subtle. It's not a huge lead. It's not some big soaring lead. It's just there to kind of give a bit more rhythm and complement the track's melody. I'm 
I don't like the high end on that, and I don't like how kind of video gamey it sounds. So I'm just gonna fine tune it a little bit. May push the sustain up just a tiny bit. And maybe I will just put a little bit of attack. Let's see how that sounds. A little bit less cut off. And maybe a tiny bit of unison. It's a little electronic sounding, so maybe I'll fine tune it some more, but let's just move on for now. This is uh, gonna help it sound more organic. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the MIDI. I forgot to mention that. So we do have a little bit of variation in the velocity. This is These are the notes here. So you can take a look at those. It's catchy, it's rhythmic, but it's not so repetitive. It's not just such a, a drum pattern. It's more of an expressive pattern. So that's why it's more of a lead sound. So I kind of went a little bit more expressive with it to give it a bit more character. By the way, everybody, I wanted to let you know that if you check the description, there is actually some freebies. There's a free sample pack, free checklists, links to online music production courses curated and taught by myself, links to online coaching. Definitely check out those links if you are really interested in learning music production. Let's get back to the video. And then I'm going to add this other layer. So this is a layer that's just helping this pluck sound not so electronic, and it's gonna help it sound more like a real instrument. So I grabbed a complete control preset. It is this uh, clavinet, and I just tweaked it a little bit, uh, just increased the vibrato amount, I believe, and a little bit of the wah, and this is how it sounds. So on its own, also doesn't sound great, but these are gonna be kind of in the background, and I'm gonna filter out quite a bit here. Just want it to, to give a little bit of that organic, realistic sound. And of course, add some nice reverb on there. Let's add some shimmer. If you don't have round and you don't have shimmer, don't worry, you can use just regular reverbs for this. And I will be including the bounced out versions of these leads and all these sounds in the project files as well. So if you don't have these synths, you will still have access to the bounced out versions of them. Let's do small stereo, mix, Right, and that really cool string tail. And let's take a listen with the pluck and everything else, and we'll move on to the last few sounds that we have, and we'll wrap it up. To add even more atmosphere and depth to this song, we're going to add some atmospheric pads and one-shot sounds. So to do this, we're going to use a big reverb. So I can just use the reverb that I have here. And we're going to crank that reverb up quite a bit. And let's duplicate that reverb. And we'll put that just a little bit. And any sound that you put through here now is going to sound very big, very atmospheric and huge. But what I've done is taken these guitar samples of these pads, and this is in the key of A. I've taken this guitar pad. This is actually a sample from my new sample pack, which you can access with the same link to access the project files. So if you click the description below, there is a link to the project files, and you can also get the download for this sample pack. And then this one here is the same sample, but it's pitched up to uh, a seven semitones, which is a fifth higher. I can take a listen before and after the reverbs. Let's turn both these reverbs off and take a listen. This is actually an octave higher. And then I have this down, one down here. This one's a little different. I pitched it up two octaves and it's actually at the E. And then I changed this from the complex to beats. And when you listen to it, you'll hear why I did that. 
Here it's like glitchy sounding. Well, that sounds really cool when you put the reverb on it. And I just thought it would be kind of cool to add like a more mysterious sound, one that's not so organic. It's more of like a trippy sound. I heard that uh, Gab Rome does that in some of his tracks, and I, I believe Corey does as well. But it was just kind of a cool little addition that's not, it's not taking you out, but it's a little bit different. So let's actually grab everything here and let's just duplicate it over once. Move these both over one, two, three, four. And I encourage you to try and grab different sounds as well. I just have these guitar plucks, but we'll, we'll actually do one more example before we listen. Let's, let's go to this pigments here and I'm just going to add a random one. So we'll, we'll grab these reverbs. We'll duplicate them over to here and let's grab a random note on pigments. I chose this one. It's kind of a weird off-putting sound, Astral Bell. And we'll push it in uh, A. It's kind of cool sound. Let's go a little lower. Maybe a little higher, actually. So let's go ahead and just place that in there. Just randomly. We'll play the A. And let's filter out some of that high end and some of the low end. Just to show you that you can use pretty much anything with these reverbs on it, and it's going to give you that nice atmosphere as long as it's in key. Those pads really add quite a bit of depth, and it just really fills up that kind of emptiness that we're hearing by just having it repeat so much. It's not that the track's empty, it's just that those melodic elements really push the track forward and give you that ear candy that you're kind of craving after hearing a loop play over and over so many times. So now I'm going to do a quick arrangement and some fine tuning and tweaks to get it ready for that final playback. This would be a great time for you to click that subscribe button. It's just in the corner of the screen. You can also help me out by liking the video. And if you want to turn notifications on by clicking the bell, you'll get notified of more videos where I make music like certain artists in styles of progressive house, organic house, techno, and some other genres as well. I also do other videos of music production techniques and tips, so you definitely want to subscribe if you're keen on learning more music production. Anyways, let's get back to the video. I just want to balance out the mix a little bit, so I'm going to turn the kick down. And maybe go down 2 more dB, but also bring down these bass elements down 2 dB. So these. Okay, that sounds all right. The drum bus, I'm gonna grab a glue compressor and just kind of glue the drums together a little bit. Two to three dB average. That sounds good to me. Just gonna turn down this tail a little bit more and I'm going to uh, actually bring that tail out for the first half. So I'll just cut the tail out here and I will just bring it in on the second part of the arrangement. The clap I want to bring up in volume. That's good. Maybe bring that low end up a little bit and the snappy bit down a little bit. Okay, the strings can come down just a little bit more. Tie pluck, just a little bit less cut off. And a little bit less low. Lead sounds okay. But I do want to bring down this background pluck layer quite a bit. Just very, very far in the background, giving that kind of cool movement. And let's add some EQ to these. So I'm going to group them together. And let's grab an EQ because they are quite full sounding. I don't want that low end so much. And just turn up a little bit as well. Okay, and now I can go into the actual arrangement. So I'm just going to duplicate pretty much everything over. Tail won't come in until around here. So I'll just automate this frequency. And then I will use an EQ to filter out the top end as well. So this is going to just filter in this part and let's bring more one more of these let's bring this one and i'm just going to change the octave up one just a whole octave up just going to grab a symbol and throw it down here put a reverb on there put the decay time up quite a bit dry wet up and then freeze and flatten and put another reverb on there Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is add some reverb to these drums. So I can do this individually, but I think it's fine if we just grab a reverb and put it over the whole bus. If you want to do this to individuals with a return track, that's great as well. So I'll put a little bit of a, high, a low cut, turn the high cut off, pre-delay at about 10-ish milliseconds, decay time under a second. I usually go between 750 and 900 milliseconds, dry wet really low down to maybe 10 or 15%. A little bit more. 
And I can see that I'm clipping here. I'm just gonna turn the soft clipping on to make sure that we're not getting any aggressive clipping here. If you're making deep house and organic house similar to this, I encourage you to keep on practicing with more and more organic percussion sounds, placing them strategically, putting them in places that is going to encourage the groove and add those little details and one shots. It will really bring up the quality of the mix. Just make sure you're not overdoing it and you make sure that you're EQing enough that you're leaving room for all the other instruments to come through as well. So that's everything. The track is ready for playback. Let's take a listen to how to make music in the style of Cora and Gab Rome. All right, so if you want the project files, click the link in the description below. Also check the description for free downloads such as checklists, sample packs, some links to my coaching and my music production courses. Feel free to comment below who you want me to cover in my next how to make music like videos, and I will see you in the next video.